Hello, I'm Eric Quay, and I'm a certified sommelier with the Court of Master Sommeliers, a French wine scholar at the Wine Scholar Guild. I have a diploma from the Edinburgh Whiskey Caddy, and I'm a certified whiskey ambassador. In this video, I'm going to share with you six more wines that every whiskey lover should know. About 90% of the cast aging whiskey in Scotland are ex bourbon cast. The other 10% is mostly wine casks, although there are also rum casks as well. And the first of the six that every wine lover should know is Champagne. Champagne is a wine region in northeastern France at the very edge of the wine zone at the 50th parallel. The grapes Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, and Chardonnay are primarily used to produce all Champagne, but small amounts of Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Arbane, and Petit Messler are vinified as well. The process of making champagne called the Method Traditionnelle, formerly known as Method Champagnois, entails making a still wine, bottling it, adding an unfermented juice with yeast, adding a bottle cap, then allowing the juice added to ferment in the bottle, which provides the CO2 and additional alcohol. After at least three years of aging, it goes through a process known as remorage, or riddling, in which the bottles are rotated in racks to move the yeast to the edge of the neck. The neck of the bottle is then frozen, the yeast cap is disgorged, a small amount of sugar, called le dessage, is added, and the traditional wine cork is added. So there are at least two whiskeys that advertise that they are being aged or finished in champagne casks, giving the impression that the whiskey derives flavor from a sparkling wine. The first is the Aaron Malt Grand Cru Champagne Finish, and the second is the Glenfiddich Grand Cru Champagne Finish. Particularly using the imagery of bubbles in their advertising and the media is going along with it, stating that Glenfiddich is giving sparkling wine treatment to whiskey. I'm going to call this bullshit and here's the reason why. As I just explained, wine is made twice for champagne. First, a still wine is made, which is then put into a bottle. Then an unfermented juice is added, and that is fermented in the bottle with a bottle cap. When that second juice is fermented, the fermentation process produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. But because there's a cap on it, the carbon dioxide can't escape. That's where you get your bubbles from. Then the yeast is removed, and then the regular cork is put in, and now you have a sparkling wine. Now there are champagne producers who will age their first still wine in a cask before putting it into the bottle, but no producer puts a sparkling wine, a champagne as we know it, into a cask. And so when Glenfiddich is given the impression that their Grand Cru Champagne finished whiskey is associated with bubbles, as you can see in the advertising, there's all these bubbles associated uh, with the imagery of the whiskey. They're giving the consumers the impression that the festive sparkling wine that we know as champagne is somehow imparting a character to the whiskey. But if you were to put a sparkling wine into a barrel, you would lose all your bubbles. So they do produce still table wines in champagne, but they cannot compete with the fine wines of Burgundy. It is just too cold in the Champagne region to get the ripeness that you want as you would have in Burgundy. So the cast that they use to age this whiskey has nothing to do with the sparkling wine Champagne as we know it. Rather, they're using the cast that they use to add a little bit of an oak character to the Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier that was then put into making Champagne sparkling wine. So while the sparkling wine champagne is one of the most food friendly and festive wines that you can buy, you're gonna be hard pressed to find anything in common between this wine and those whiskeys. And the next wine that every whiskey lover should know is Chardonnay. The Chardonnay variety originated in the Burgundy wine region of Eastern France, mostly widely grown in the Cote de Bonne and Chablis. So it used to be the number one grape grown in the world was a grape called Arian grown in central Spain, but it was all distilled for producing spirits. Now, Chardonnay is the number one widely grown grape in the world. Chardonnay is fairly neutral and highly reflects the soil and climate in which it is grown. In cool regions, it tends to have green apple and pear notes. In warmer regions, it expresses more stone fruit notes of peaches 
and in very warm regions, it becomes tropical with aromas and flavors of pineapple and mango. So here are our two Chardonnays from California. This one is called Bogle. It is from Clarksburg in Central California. Warmer region, it's gonna give you notes of mango, pineapple, and other tropical characters. This is one of my favorite Chardonnays from Hansel Vineyards in Sonoma, closer to the ocean, so you're gonna get more pear and apple characteristics. An absolutely superb wine from the oldest Chardonnay grapes in California, over 60 years old. Of course, the price difference between these two is huge. Bogle runs for about nine or ten dollars, and Hansel probably closer to seventy or eighty dollars. Chardonnay is often considered to be the winemaker's grape, as it can be made in a number of styles. Fermented and aged in stainless steel, it becomes austere with crisp acidity displaying aromas and flavors of yellow apple and pear notes and pairs well with seafood and shellfish. This is most likely what you're gonna find in Chablis. Aged in neutral oak, it has slight softer edges and if put through secondary malolactic conversion, the malic acid is converted to lactic acid, it becomes buttery and if it aged in the new French oak, it will have layers of vanilla. If aged sur lee on the yeast and stirred batonnage, it can develop toasty notes and if barrel fermented and barrel aged, it can develop flavors of apple pie with cinnamon and butterscotch. As previously stated, Chardonnay is also a major player in sparkling wines such as Champagne, along with other grapes such as Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. Classic Chardonnay regions include the Cote de Bonne of Burgundy, France, Chablis, and California, anywhere along the coast, Los Caneros, Napa Valley, Monterey, and Russian River and Santa Barbara. And there are also absolutely fantastic Chardonnays coming out of Western Australia. Four whiskeys that are aged in Chardonnay casks include the Glenmore 10 year old Chardonnay cask Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, Virginia Distilling Company Chardonnay cask finished Virginia Highland Whiskey, Thomas S. Moore bourbon finished in Chardonnay casks, and the Amador Straight Hop Flavored Whiskey. It's a blend of 60% straight malt whiskey, 40% hop flavored whiskey distilled from a craft. IPA beer, then the components were aged separately for over two years in French oak wine barrels and then married in Chardonnay barrels for another two years before being bottled. And the next wine that every whiskey lover should know is Barolo. This is one of my favorites. An absolutely fantastic food friendly wine, but it's not for the faint of heart because while it has the elegance and finesse of the finest burgundies, it has enough tannin to rip your face off. Barolo is the name of a region in Piedmont, Italy, and the grape is Nebbiolo. It is similar in aromas and flavors to Pinot Noir from Burgundy with cherry, herbs, earth, and mushrooms, but it can also have a hint of tar. But whereas Pinot Noir tends to have very low to medium tannin, Nebbiolo has very high tannins, making it very age worthy. So this is a wine I like to have 10 years on it before I open the bottle. However, there is a difference between say new school and old school Barolo producers. So you need to get to know your producers. Some new school Barolo producers are using uh, newer young French oak cast, which sort of helps Nebbiolo to age a little bit faster. So you can drink them a little younger. The old traditional producers are using a neutral cast, huge, huge casts, which don't really soften the tannins as you would might want. And so you need to sit on these wines for about 15 to 20 years before you can really approach them. A few Barolo cast aged whiskeys to check out include the Hazelburn nine-year-old Barolo cast Campbelltown single malt Scotch whiskey, the Edredauer 8-year-old 2006 Barolo Cast Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, and then the Pogue Castle 12-year-old Marchesi de Barolo Cast Finish Irish Whiskey. And the fourth wine that every whiskey lover should know is Malbec. This has become an extremely popular wine. In fact, they made a document about it called the Boom Varietal. Malbec is one of five Bordeaux grape varieties, but it has become less popular in Bordeaux after 1956 when frost killed off 75% of the crop. But in Cahors, France, where it is known as Cot, they replanted in the region and they frequently mixed Malbec with Merlot and Tanat to make dark, full-bodied wines, 
but have ventured into 100% Malbec varietal wines more recently. It then found a new home in Argentina, particularly in the Mendoza region, where it finds its purest expression and it is a very affordable, high quality wine. This is the Luca Old Vine Malbec from 2017 from the Uco Valley in Mendoza. These wines tend to have more of a blueberry, blackberry character with notes of violets, mocha, and vanilla. The tannins can be medium to medium plus, make it an excellent steak wine. There aren't a lot of Malbec cash whiskeys out there, but one that I did find that I really like is this Alangro Red Malbec Cash 13 year old peated Kelmonton single malt scotch whiskey. And our next wine that every whiskey lover should know is Zinfandel. Zinfandel is a California grape that originated in Italy and further back in Croatia. DNA analysis Carol Meredith of UC Davis revealed that it is genetically equivalent to the Croatian grape Tripodrag as well as to the Primitivo variety traditionally known in Apulia, the heel of Italy where it is introduced in the 18th century. The grape bunches are often uneven sizes resulting in some berries becoming ripe earlier than others. And by the time the entire bunch is ripe, the larger berries are super ripe and almost raisined. The result is higher sugars, higher levels of alcohol, and a wine with a very jammy character with aromas of raspberry, cherry, and blackberries. It is not uncommon to find wines exceeding 15% alcohol by volume. Classic Zinfandel regions in California include Amador County, Lodi, Paso Robles, Dry Creek in Sonoma, and the Napa Valley. Zinfandel cast aged whiskeys to check out include Big Bottom Zinfandel cast bourbon, Kinsey Zinfandel cask, and my favorite, the green spot, Chateau Montalena single pot still Irish whiskey. Because Zinfandel is such a big jammy wine, the result is you have a whiskey that still has those underlying characteristics of that jammy fruit note. And our sixth wine in this series that every whiskey lover should know is Malaga. Malaga is a sweet fortified wine originating in the Spanish city of Malaga, southern Spain's Costa del Sol, made from Pedro Jimenez and Moscatel grapes, such as the Jorge Ordanes Malaga made from 100% Muscat of Alexandria. And I discussed Pedro Jimenez and Moscatel grapes in my previous video, 10 wines that every whiskey lover should know. Malaga cast aged whiskeys to check out include the Yellow Spot Single Pot Irish Whiskey, which is aged in ex bourbon, ex sherry, and Malaga cast. The second is the Glen Morangy 12 year old Malaga cast finished Scotch Whiskey. This has just been released and I haven't reviewed it yet, but my review will be coming out soon. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I go live, and I want to thank all my Patreons for supporting this work. Until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.